What is going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael aka Dr. Cellini and today we are going to be talking about none other than TikTok. And if you're anything like me, you spent most of your quarantine scrolling through this app wasting countless hours and hours of your days. I selected some medically oriented TikToks today and we are going to react to them because what else are we gonna do? So let's go ahead, get into it. And for those of you who have lived under a rock for the past year and a half or so, there's an app called TikTok and it's basically where people post cringeworthy videos of them doing dances or whatnot to certain music or sounds. I got on TikTok way back almost a year ago just because it was the popular thing to do. I don't really post any stuff on there, just random videos here and there uh, because mostly I feel like I'm too old for the app and I don't know, some of it is just a little cringeworthy. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into some of these medical TikToks right now. I can't take it off. I can't take it off. Like, take it off. I can't. Take it off. I can't take it off. Like, take it off. I can't. All right, so that is Mama Dr. Jones. For those of you who don't know her, she is a Instagrammer, YouTuber, and also a prominent TikTok doctor. And 100% agree with this because so many times you want to take that mask off and you just can't. All right, next up. Ever wonder why they do this in movies? See, our body really doesn't like air in the blood. It's called an air embolus. And if you look in the syringe, there's a little bit of air in the top. So if we were to push this right in, you'd be pushing air in. What do we do? We prime it by pushing it up just a little bit and getting the air out. I 100% agree with this because most syringes contain a little bit of air in the top of the syringe. You always want to push that out or prime the syringe before you use it because it is very bad to inject air into somebody's bloodstream. It can cause an air embolism, or when the air travels all the way to the brain and basically causes a stroke. So that's not good. I also prime every syringe before I inject my local anesthetic when I do my procedures. That way, for two reasons. One, because when you inject air underneath the skin, when you're creating like a wheel underneath the skin surface, it can cause a lot of pain. And number two, we actually do most of our procedures under ultrasound guidance, which means we guide the needle using an ultrasound probe, one hand and needle in the other. And if I don't prime those syringes, meaning get the air out, I can inject some of that air into the soft tissues underneath the ultrasound probe, which will completely obscure my image and I will not be able to see anything I'm trying to target because air is basically causes this huge shadowing artifact on ultrasound. So if I don't get the air out, I can potentially obscure everything under my ultrasound image and I have to abort the entire procedure. So you can see how important it is to get the air out of your syringe. Next up. Yes, ORs and IR suites are always cold because working under those hot lights and for my instance, when I'm wearing very heavy lead all day long during the procedures. You get so hot and sweat regardless. So we keep the rooms nice and cold so that we, you know, feel comfortable. One thing I don't enjoy is when we have to do pediatric procedures because especially on some of the neonates, you have to keep the room at like 80 or 85 degrees. And I mean, I'm just covered in sweat when I leave that place. Next. <music> actually really true med schools don't really care what major you have almost everybody has like the stereotypical biology major when they apply to med school but I actually interviewed medical school applicants and I preferred when they didn't have a normal biology or biochemistry major because that means they were interested in something different as long as you have those pre-medicine prerequisites it doesn't really matter what your major is just get a good GPA and that's good enough for me next Okay, yeah, some of you all have seen my videos when I get my scrubs out of a scrub machine. This is a little different machine. Uh, you actually get them out of certain little slots, whereas mine kind of drops down. I've used both kind of these machines. 
I don't really have a preference. Next. For the people that I see at Walmart, if you were wearing this thingy, like this, just take it off. It's doing you no good. <laughs> That's actually pretty true. Having a mask over your mouth and not your nose is kind of pretty worthless. This is actually pretty funny because I can't tell you how many nurses will call you on the phone and be like, this patient needs sedation. And we always second guess it because you don't want to give sedation when you don't need to, but this is actually pretty hilarious because you will have patients like this who are yelling and cursing all over the place, and she just kind of holds up the phone so that you can uh, get a taste of what she's experiencing. Next. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So there's always this huge stigma when you're on call or working overnight if someone says the word quiet. Some people have these superstitions that if you say, oh, the night is so quiet so far, or the Q word, then the night is going to pick up. But I am not superstitious, so I just kind of take whatever comes in. What can you do? If it's quiet, it's quiet. If I say it's quiet, doesn't mean something's gonna come in. A doctor a few years out of medical school posted on Twitter the other day that she made less than minimum wage and no one believed her. So I'm here to show you just how much doctors make after medical school. So to become a doctor, you first have to go to college. Then you go to med school for the next four years. After med school, you start residency, which is your first real job as a doctor. You spend the next three to five years training in your residency program. Maybe go on to do a fellowship or two before you take a big test and become an attending. You have to pay to go to college and medical school. And med school can cost up to $300,000. Everyone thinks that doctors make a lot of money, so why did that resident say that she made less than minimum wage? That's because doctors don't make big doctor money when they're in residency. The average salary for a first year resident is $60,000 a year. Now this would be an awesome salary if you were working a 40 hour work week, but residents can work up to 80 hours a week and sometimes even more. Most programs don't offer four weeks of vacation a year, but if they did, that would end up being $15.63 an hour, which would be above minimum wage. That's actually a pretty good breakdown. I think a lot of pre-med students and med students need to hear this kind of stuff. So the $60,000 salary that she used in this example is great for a 40-hour workweek job, but we tend to work 80 to 100-hour workweeks, which puts our salary in the area of minimum wage, which as you can see for someone who went to school for eight years thus far, plus multiple years of training, you're not really getting paid what you're worth, and that's the whole issue with residency and getting paid so little. So it takes a while for you to actually make real money as a physician, like 14 years sometimes. So not all doctors are rich. It's a very common misconception. Next. They always ask me what I got on. They be like, hey Brandon, what you got on? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. This, that's black. That's that's I like this because as you all have seen in my prior videos, I only wear jogger scrubs, the fig scrubs with the joggers. And some people always comment and say, aren't your ankles cold? Or is there a flood in here? But they just don't get the style. And that's, this is how I feel. This is me. This is me. Next. Going up, going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. Get it that I'm never going up, going up, going up. Going up, going up, going up, going up, get it that I'm never going This is pretty dead on. There are multiple types of medical students. As you can see in this video, she hit the nail on the head. So I'll let you guys decide which one of those I was. Be nice. Next. Are you having a hard time? No, I'm not. I'm not having a hard time. I'm not having a hard time. Okay, you're not having a hard time. All no. right. Okay. This hits too close to home. I can't tell you how many times as a med student, especially on my emergency resident rotation, where I had difficult time placing IVs because it's kind of a difficult skill to learn. Much like anything, it's kind of like you just have to get that tactile sensation and once you get used to it and once you do it a bajillion times, you become good at it. But when you're just starting out, it's pretty hard. Next. The poor orange. Mm -hmm. 
Sis, the patient. <laughs> the patient. <laughs> She's taking her sweet time. Like. Stop. Oh, yeah. Where's the bowel? Bowel needs to be up. I know. Not the devil. You're holding it wrong. There you go. Oh. oh my god, her laugh when she just said that? That's hilarious. I guess step number one is to screw on the cap of your needle before you try to inject. I, th I think she's trying to do like a subdermal injection or an intradermal injection. I don't know. That's hilarious. All right, so that officially concludes this video regarding medical TikToks. I hope you all enjoyed it. It's a little different than what I usually do. If you want me to do more TikToks, let me know in the comments below. I still, I just, I don't know if I will, but if you want me to, I guess I can try to add another social media platform, but YouTube and Instagram plus being in residency is pretty tough already. Otherwise, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button and follow me on Instagram if you don't already. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen that I have started a new kind of cooking channel with my brothers and my two cousins. It's called Busting Chops. I'll link it below as well and at the end of this video. We have some pretty funny content and it's all kind of cooking oriented. I'm gonna be doing some bartending stuff over there as well. So it's just a fun page that we kind of started together as family. So I promise you'll laugh if you go watch it and you will learn how to cook in the process. Otherwise, I'll see you all on the next video.